Electromagnetic waves can be a confusing topic because it's going to cover things that you know lots about already and also talk about things that you know very little about but then tell you they're basically the same thing. We're going to look into it in a little bit more detail. I'm going to cover the most important parts with you and then you're going to investigate the other properties. Let's start with something you know about, visible light. Here's a patch of red. I'll describe the colours as well in case you cannot see them clearly. So, it's red. It's a colour. It's a single colour and I've given it a name. Red. Here's another patch of colour and it's also red. I've given it the same name, even though I can see it's a different colour. Here's another red. And another. I need a better way to name. If I go to a paint shop, there are lots of names for reds, but different companies use different names. Now, we're studying a science here, so let's think about what makes these different. Well, we see them because light with a certain frequency comes from them into our eyes. This red has a frequency of 400 terahertz. That's like 400 times 10 to the 12 hertz. This one, 410 terahertz. This is 420 terahertz. And 430 terahertz here. Now this is the best way to describe colours, scientifically. All electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second. So using V equals F lambda, speed is frequency times wavelength, I can calculate the wavelengths for each of these two. Now remember though that in glass or water, the frequency would be the same but the wavelength changes. And this is why frequency is a better descriptor. So these are the corresponding wavelengths. Notice how as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. These reds only contain one frequency of light so they are called monochromatic. If I add another colour in and mix to get a new colour, I now have two frequencies of light, so it is not monochromatic anymore. The light we get from the sun is white light, and it contains pretty much every frequency of light. If we put a prism in its path, the light is dispersed into the spectrum. Now careful, this is not a rainbow. A rainbow is a thing you get in the sky due to water droplets and it shows you this spectrum. Because all the colours in the spectrum have different frequencies, they travel at different speeds in the glass and so they turn by different angles. And this means they spread out. And you need to remember that blue changes the most. But visible light is just a tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Red light is at one end with wavelengths around 700 nanometers. Red lasers were used in CD players and DVD players to read data. Blu-ray discs using blue lasers replaced them since the 350 nanometer light allowed data to be smaller so more could fit on one disc. If we keep going, we get to ultraviolet with nanometer wavelengths, then X-rays and gamma radiation with picometer wavelengths. By the way, I like to think of the difference there as X-rays being made by humans and gamma rays made by nature. 
going the opposite way from red, we get infrared, then microwaves with millimeter wavelengths, and radio waves with kilometer wavelengths. I'm going to let you look into the other details, including all the regions of the electromagnetic spectrum with their uses and properties, etc., including visible light and the order of the colors. There's quite a lot of factual information that you need to remember here.